Hi and welcome to another evening of stock car racing here on Premier Sports where this week the action comes from the east coast at Skegness Stadium for the first World Championship semi-final of 2017. Ten lucky drivers will go through to the World Final at Ipswich in September to be joined by another ten from the Stoke semi-final in a couple of weeks' time. Rob Speak, the national points champion and now Skegness promoter, is back in action to try and get into the big race at Ipswich, having not raced so far this year. Over 50 cars here tonight. Brisker Formula One all the way in the first part of tonight's programme, with the finals of Brisker F2 and V8 stock cars joining in in the second part. Before we went racing tonight, we caught up with the main man himself, 318. Rob Speak. 318, Rob Speak, the silver roof rides again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's uh, a bit of a pity I won it last year because the sport's been, you know, not had it this year, but when you're in the seat, you want to win, don't you? And every promoter's dream is to have Rob Speak on the grid. Now you're the promoter with Rob Speak on the grid. Does that mean I get my dream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, when I. I don't think I would have done it if I'd have uh, drew Stoke, but when I grew it, drew here and um, it just seemed everything was in a line, you know, for me to, to do it. So I got Jamie, you know, I thank Jamie Davison for lending me the car and giving me the opportunity to do it. So, yeah, it's good. The million dollar question is, do you really want to be in the world final? Well, as soon as you put your helmet on, you want to win, don't you? You know, I mean, there's, there's no ifs or buts. You just want to, you never lose the the want to win so the minute I get in I want to win and then that's the next the obstacle we'll have to it and moving on to the promotion side of things how's the season going now you're halfway through yeah that's right it's you know I mean it's, it's sort of gone that quick we don't really know if that makes any sense we've just uh, sort of gone along with it and with it but uh, I mean, I'm really enjoying it I am good at uh, end of the year we'll have you know be able to assess the situation and uh, and me and my, you know, my missus will sit down, we'll have a look at it, see if we can improve it anywhere or we've done anything wrong and we'll go again the year after, we'll have you know, learnt a little bit then. Yeah, anything you do, you do wholeheartedly and you always put your stamp on things, so what things would you like to change now you're in the position to influence them? I don't know, I'm going to wait till the end of the season, uh, wait till the end of the season before I think about if we can change things, if we can't. We do talk a lot, me and my missus, and we are looking at the interest of, you know, Skegness Stadium, trying to make it bigger and better, and, uh, you know, we're just happy to be running it. And if this is to be Rob Speak's last ever race again, any regrets, <laughs> anything you haven't achieved, anything you would have liked to have done, because you've pretty much done it all? If I didn't race today, I, 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 when, I, when I retired the first time, I knew I was too young to retire. Um, I'd always be back, but when I retired the second time, I, I was happy. You know, I had absolutely nothing I wanted to do any different. You know, I just I was really content to pack in then and, and just be happy with what I do. But you know, racing here today, if I hadn't raced here today, it wouldn't have made any difference. I was happy when I packed it. Well, let's hope that when that helmet goes on, we say the old Rob speak and <laughs> it, guaranteed to live in the race up. Best of luck. Thank you. Time to go racing then here at Skegness Stadium. These are the cars that are not competing in the World Championship semi-final. 30 cars on track for heat number one, including the world champion Frankie Wayneman Jr. He's in the other World Championship semi-final at Stoke on August the 12th. We've got Dan Johnson out in this race as well, and Tom Harris in car number 84. 30 cars out there. Then Neil Hooper, the man from the southwest in 545. We also welcome back Mick Swordo. We've not seen him out for a while, car number 150 on this uh, fairly tight tarmac raceway. Always big crowds here on the East Coast. Here we go, Jacqueline Ellis and Sam Rendo will lead them off as the green flag drops and Jacqueline Ellis won't lead them off. A wheel has come off her car, bouncing its way down the home straight. That will be a red flag straight away. Jacqueline Ellis sparking her way down the uh, home straight there, minus a rear wheel. Didn't even reach the start line before her car converted itself into a three-wheeler. There's the errant wheel. Let's go to win if it goes much quicker. Green flag wave then, and uh, Jacqueline Ellis immediately shed a rear wheel. Shower of sparks down the home straight, chased by the loose wheel. That's what happens if you don't tighten your nuts up well enough. So getting ready for a second attempt then at uh, Brisker F1, heat number one, and 127 Austin Moore pulling off onto the centre. It's 3.03 of Carl Whiteman on the front of the grid this time, along with Sam Render in the ex-Richard Earl number 385 car, locally based to this raceway. Away we go then with heat number one. 16 laps, they get a clean start this time. Already the sun starting to set here on the east coast of England. Bumpers going in among the blue graders there and a 
attack there from Dan Johnson in number four on the back of 259 Paul Hines. And behind them, Mick Sorder in 150. Great to have Mr. Front Bumper back in action. The world champion junior Wayman and Tom Harris in 84 in behind him. It's 385 Sam Render who leads the way. Richard Davies in 325 trying to get through there to second place on the inside. He's done it. Third is 195 of Dean Whitwell with the Whiteman in 303 dropping back slightly and throw it into the turn there. Whiteman's gone. Carl Whiteman has spun in the green 303 car there on the outside. Sam Render leads it ahead of 195. Dean Whitwell and the leader in trouble there. Where on earth was he going? Straight into the fence. That's almost taken Dean Whitwell out as well. He comes under attack from Todd Jones in 186. This is frantic so far. Jones has taken the lead, and I think that's Neil Hooper coming through into second place in 5-4-5. But uh, I think the yellow flag's maybe about to come out. The starter are signalling the drivers to avoid the uh, stranded car of Sam Render there in 3-8-5. Todd Jones leads ahead of Neil Hooper. There's a battle between 5-4-3 of Drew Lamas and the number four of Dan Johnson attacking his old rival, Junior Wayman, in the number one. But the uh, caution flags are coming out because of that stranded car of Sam Render. There he is in 3-8-5, made a complete mess of turn four and almost took out Dean Whitwell as well, which lost Whitwell the lead. Don't know where Sam Render was going there in 385, coming off turn four. He was heading for Skegness Beach, I think. Made a complete hash of it there, got it all wrong on the throttle, and it's now 186 Todd Jones who's got the lead. George Elwell in 501 is up into second place. Dean Whitwell is down to third. Then we've got Neil Hooper in 545. Todd Jones, the man from Farnborough in the uh, south of England. Raced a variety of formulas over the years, from saloon stock cars, super stocks, and Brisker F2, among others. Now races Brisker F1 along with his brother Murray. Tom Jones clears off into the lead on the restart. And Dan Johnson battling with Junior Waitman. Dan Johnson recently lost his uh, European Championship to Nigel Green, who uh, will uh, lead the grid for today's World Championship semi final. Coming up the second race uh, on today's programme. Order battling there with the 101 of Tristan Jackson. Todd Jones has done the fastest lap of the race in car 186. It's order attacking one of the uh, yellow tops there. And somebody's slowing on turn four. That's Danny Wayman, I think, out of it in 212. He's pulled up on turn four. 186, Todd Jones with the blue roof continues to lead the way. Union flag is out. That means half distance. It's George Elwell in second place. So the blue grade running one and two. White and yellow grade has set the pace on the front of the grid also, always early on. Now the red and superstar grade is catching up on the back. Junior Wayman with the gold roof, the world champion, gets ahead of Dean Whitwell in 195. So he's rising rapidly towards the front. It's Todd Jones and a clear lead in 186. Dan Johnson in number four gets past Dean Whitwell. Racing Junior Wayman behind them, number 84. Former world champion Tom Harris, who's been racing successfully in America on the ovals this year as well. Behind them is Drew Lamas, so the relative newcomer to Brisker F1, moving up from the F2s. There's four laps to go now into lap number 13, and Todd Jones doesn't look like he's going to be caught here in 186. Bumpers going in there from who else? Mick Sorder in uh, car number 150. Anyway, but ahead of Dan Johnson, Tom Harris, three of the biggest names in Brisker Formula One stock car racing. Closing in on Neil Hooper in uh, 545. There is Jones. Back marker traffic now. He's got the 478 car of Shane Geary, ex V8 Hot Stocks racer, ahead of him there. V8 Hot Stocks will be out later on. And so, one of our support formulas here at Skegness today will see their meeting final. Fraser Nairn in 480 being uh, lapped as well. You cover this season. The car has pulled up on uh, turn four there behind Danny Wayman, one of the white tops. Can't make out who that was. Coming round to start the last lap now, though, and uh, Junior Waitman attacking George Elwell here. He's already got ahead of Neil Hooper. Looks like uh, the number one car is going to go up into second place into the last lap. He's not going to catch Todd Jones. He's got a clear lead in car number 186. It's going to be a clear win for the Blue Raider in heat number one here at Skegness. Using the curb there on the final turn, he comes through to take the win. Jones with a clear victory over Junior Waitman, who's followed home by Dan Johnson. George Elwell in fourth place for the rest of the results in a moment. Well, they couldn't keep up with the Joneses in that one, could they? See his brother Murray out in that one, unfortunately, but it is Todd who takes the win. He had a couple of wins at Northampton at the uh, European Championship weekend. He can't stop winning 
on the tarmac at the moment. Todd Jones in 186, nearly three seconds clear of Junior Wayneman at the flag. Dan Johnson taking third ahead of Elwell Hooper and Harris in sixth place. Race winner Todd Jones also getting the fastest lap. 27 cars went the distance. 186, Todd Jones will be coming a regular now on this show. Yeah, it seems to be getting the hang of it now, so uh, hopefully a little trip back up to red and be a bit, little bit more of a challenge, hopefully. So. Yeah, Skeg is a tough track as well. It's fast and it is quite quite rough, but you drove well in that one. Yeah, it is a fast track considering the size. Yeah, it's, it's good to race at, good stock car track, so yeah, no, it's a good track all round. Rack up some extra points from blue while you're there. Yeah, might as well if we can. Hopefully get back up to red, but next meeting shall, so might be a different story next week. Well, best of luck. Lovely, cheers, mate. Thanks. Gentlemen, start your engines. The most famous words in motorsport herald the V8 engines into life for our main race of the day, the first World Championship semi-final for Bristol Formula One in 2017. Nigel Green, the European champion in pole position with 390, former world champion Stuart Smith alongside him. 24 cars out there on track. Second row, Matt Newson, number 16. Lee Fairhurst won the world final here at Skegness back in 2012. In car 217, third row, Paul Harrison and the man everybody's eyes will be on, Rob Speak. Fourth row, Ryan Harrison and former world champion, Craig Finnegan. Fifth row, Ben Riley in 422, the rain master. He'll be hoping for rain at Ipswich if he gets through. Michael Scriven alongside him, very, very quick on tarmac in the number 12. Sixth row, Frankie JJ, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. in treble five. And Michael Stewart alongside him. Then the pace car has pulled off. Murray Jones and Steve Webster lining up on the seventh row of the grid. In the eighth row, it is Bradley Harrison in the 25 car. Mark Sargent in 326. It's going to be a 20-lap race. Nigel Green leading the round so, so fast on tarmac this year. Dominated the European Championship. Alongside him, Stuart Smith. Carl Hawkins and Bobby Griffin on row nine. We're on board with Rob Speak for this race in at 318. Can he get through to the world final on his 2017 comeback race? Colin Goodswin and Chris Cowley on the 10th row. The grid now forming up two by two. Under the floodlights here at Skegness Stadium. 20 laps, 24 cars on the grid. The first 10 finishers go through to the world final at Ipswich. Chris Ford, Chris Broxoff, Paul Carter and Sean Willis rounding out the grid for this one. Here we go then, who will be the lucky 10 to get through? We are about to find out over the next 20 laps. Green flag goes down, let's get ready to rumble. Away they go, down towards the first turn. Green's made the break from pole position ahead of Smith. Matt Newson in the 16 car, third place. And Rob Speak's already gone wide there with an attack on Lee Fairhurst. Murray Jones bangs wheels with the 5-1-2 of Michael Stewart. Will they all get round the first lap OK? It looks like it. The 4-4-5 of Nigel Green, who's got the lead. Rob Speak stuck on the outside line. He's lost a few places. He'll do his best to fight back on the track. He now promotes us. Attacking Craig Finnegan there in the 55 car. We're on board with Rob Speak. Down the straight he goes. He's up the inside of Finnegan in uh, 55. We've got a retirement already. 3-2-6 Mark Sargent on his local raceway out of the race. East Coast legend, as he's called. He won't be in the world final, sadly, this year. Tackman trying to catch the groove ahead of him after he got sent wide on the first turn. There's Chris Fort in number three, fighting it out with uh, Frankie JJ in treble five. He's under fire from Murray Jones. Saw his brother Todd take a win in heat number one. They're attacking Carl Hawkins as well in 175. They're all over each other in the midfield. 37 of Chris Cowley racing his dad Rob's car in there as well. Michael Stewart rattles off the fence along with Steve Webster. Over the curb there, Bradley Harrison. He's lost it in 25. And he'll go a lap down because there go the two leaders. Uh, Green and Smith have broken clear at the front of the field. The two front row men, Nigel Green, the European champion with the red and yellow chequered roof. Stuart Smith, who could not stop winning at the start of this season. Third place is 197 of uh, Brian Harrison. Then Lee Fairhurst, Matt Newson, Rob Speak is in sixth position. Then Finnegan, Riley Scriven and Paul Harrison. Uh, Murray Jones smoking the tyres there. Nigel Green attacking the back markers. And there goes Paul Carter, wallop into the back of Bradley Harrison. Nigel Green not wasting any time with back markers here, determined to smash him out of the way and keep that race lead. Comes upon another of them, Steve Webster there. Oh, he's got himself caught up. Stuart Smith will take the lead. Goodness me, I thought Nigel Green was going to get tangled with Steve Webster there. His heart must have been in his mouth there. He's recovered, but he's down to second. Stuart Smith leads the world semi-final. Coming up to lap, the man who starts at the very back of the grid, Sean Willis, the local man in 287, done very well to reach the 
World Semi-Finals this year. Bobby Griffin in 166 also goes a lap down. Stuart Smith leads it with green on his tail. We're coming up to half distance in this World Championship semi-final. Stuart Smith with the lead. Nigel Green attacking. He's trying to retake the lead. Ben Riley slowing up in 422. The Rainmeister is not going to get through, sadly. Green with an attack at turns three and four. He's just got the bumper in there to move Smith out wide. He's going to retake the lead into turn one. Nigel Green retakes it in 445. Down the back straight they go then. You just cannot uh, stop Nigel Green on tarmac at the moment. He's surely going to be a favourite for the world final if he gets through. He's got uh, around seven more laps to run. There's Rob Speak in 3 in 318 with the silver roof, the national points champion. He's still in the top ten. In fact, he's in fifth place now behind Lee Fairhurst. He's got ahead of Matt Newsom. So no real change among the top ten over the last few laps as Green continues to lead. Smith still on his bumper. There's our third place man, Ryan Harrison in 197, the former national points champion. Lapping a couple of back markers there, including Colin Goodswin in 3.72. And another car pulling up on turn four, and that was Paul Carter. Nigel Green under fire from Stuart Smith, but uh, Smith not getting the bumper in. They lap Murray Jones in 1.96. It'll be five laps to go this time. We're at three-quarter distance. Woods are out from the starters' rostrum. The Fairhurst attacking for third place on the back of flying Ryan Harrison. And a gap back to Rob Speak in fifth. He's in back marker traffic. Matt Newson in the yellow car there in the background in sixth position. I don't think we're going to see any major changes of position here. Just that uh, one swap for the lead earlier on when Nigel Green briefly got caught up for trying to lap Steve Webster. Coming up on Chris Ford now in number three. Stuart Smith in second place. Looks like he uh, may well be playing it safe for second place. Or is he going to line up for a last lap attack on Nigel Green? They charge down the straights. I don't think Green's going to be caught here. A couple of laps to go now. Stuart Smith in second has lapped Chris Ford. The next target, Chris Cowley in the 37. Ryan Harrison outpacing Lee Fairhurst. Here they are for third and fourth place. Rob Speak is going to get into the world final by the look of things in fifth position. He will shake things up from there, I am sure. But it's going to be a win for 4-4-5. Nigel Green, Stuart Smith is not going to uh, lunge in by the look of things on the last bend. No, he, well, he's not going to get there, and 445 Nigel Green takes a front row slot for the world final. Stuart Smith comes over in second. Ryan Harrison smokes the tyres as he comes home in third, and Rob Speak is in as well. Rob Speak has qualified. Ryan Harrison smokes his tyres in celebration. He came in third ahead of Lee Fairhurst. We'll confirm the top ten qualifiers for you in a moment. The red flags go out on the World Championship semi-final here at Skegness. The top ten finishers will be joined by the top ten from Stoke in a couple of weeks' time. And there is Rob Speak making his way through in 3-1-8. He finished in fifth place. We'll check the result then. Nigel Green, the winner, by 0.75 of a second over Stuart Smith. Then Ryan Harrison, third, ahead of Lee Fairhurst. Rob Speak is in. Matt Newson in sixth position. Then Craig Finnegan, Paul Harrison, Michael Scriven and Frankie JJ, the top ten. They go through to the world final. Nigel Green, they say the future's orange. I think the future's green. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, no, it was, uh, it was a good race. It was. It got, it got a bit entertaining in the middle when the caught the back markers up. Nobody was moving out of their way. Obviously, I had Stuart breathing down my neck, so I didn't want to give him too many opportunities to uh, to, to fire me in. So I had to crack on through the traffic, and doing so, I ended up tangling with one of them. So uh, that uh, allowed him through and made the race a bit a bit harder than what it could have been, really. Yeah, Stuart was shadowing you most of the way through, and I think from listening in. I think he was lining you up at the end, but you just got that gap. <laughs> yeah, I should imagine so. Yeah, he's out there to win, isn't he? Of course he is. But um, no, we race with respect in the middle of the race anyway. And um, there was a few part cars. I could have quite easily put him into one of them. And he, and likewise, I could have been in one. But um, we didn't do that. And obviously, we'll uh, see what happens in Ipswich. Yeah, pole position for the world final or outside of the front row. We don't know yet. And we'll go to Stoke and see who's going to be your partner there. That's right, yeah. It, Seems a bit strange that it's decided on the toss of a coin who starts what side really, but um, hopefully I'll get the inside and I can um, get round the first corner is the first box I want to tick and then sort of gather it up from then and uh, yeah, push on. Well, best of luck. Thanks. Consolation time here at Skegness. These are drivers that didn't get through to the meeting final at the first attempt. There are a few spots of rain in the air ahead of this one. 22 cars on track. 
to look out for in this one include Danny Wayman in 2-1-2, 4-2-2 of Ben Riley, Bradley Harrison in 25, a few drivers who didn't get their world final placing, Ben Herdman in 207 is out there as well, Chris Fort in number three, in front of the grid 299 Craig Tomblin in uh, one of Matt Newson's higher cars, several of the higher cars out in this one, 483 Wayne Marshall in another of them on the uh, front row of the grid, so here we go over 16 laps then the uh, consolation event for the Briscoe Formula One stock cars under the floodlights here at Skegness. Away they go. It's the first turn, one or two lockups there from the yellow tops, but already Craig Tomlin has made the break at the front. He's an ex Briscoe Formula Two racer in his first ever meeting in an F1 today. His son Charlie races in the uh, National Mini Stocks under number 290. Side by side there between uh, Ben Riley and Ben Herdman, the ex Autograss champion in 207 on the inside, Chris Ford, and a spin there, that's John Fortune in 164, and Chris Broxop has gone as well in 338, a rare appearance on tarmac for him in the uh, World Semi-Finals today, John Fortune, the ex Brisker F2 World Champion, spinning out there as well. There's another ex F2 man who leads the way, Craig Tomlin, ahead of Richard Davies in uh, 325, Tomlin's going in further back, 127, Austin Moore, sent wide by the 422 of Ben Riley, we're on board with him. You can see the drops of rain there on the camera lens. The bumpers Tristan Jackson in 101 out wide. A fire in turn going through on the inside. That's Danny Wayman in 212. Had a quieter season this year. Danny been going over to race in Holland on the dirt tracks quite regularly with some success there. Wayman, the former under 25s champion, leads Chris Cowley in 37, Chris Fort, Ben Riley, and Sean Willis in the middle of that lot as well in 287. Looks like he's slowing down. Oh, yes, he's got a problem. Danny Wayman has done the fastest lap of the race. He tries to race towards the front of the field. But still, your leader at the moment is Craig Tomlin ahead of Richard Davies. Matt Armstrong in 455 is in third place. And we've got Danny Colliver in 468, Colin Goodswin, and Aaron Leach. Danny Wayman up to seven. There is Tomlin. Two seconds clear now, could he hang on for a uh, first ever Brisker F1 win in his first ever meeting? He's only done one test session in the car prior to this meeting. Hired the car from Matt Newson, number 16, who I think has got seven higher cars that he runs now. Very busy man indeed. Ben Riley, carrying our camera in 4-2-2, passing Richard Davies in 3-25. Rain increases here at Skegness. Ben Riley will go well. He loves, as we said earlier, racing in the rain. He goes the bumper from Danny Wayman on the back of number 70 of Aaron Leach in the car that Ashley England has been racing in Mr. F1 recently as well. There's Cowley attacking the 70 car in turn. Goes through there on the inside. The leader still uh, the white graders up front. Impressive stuff. Danny Wayman, the only man really breaking into the white and yellow graders here. Still Richard Davies in second ahead of Matt Armstrong. Wayne is up to six behind Danny Colliver. There is the Londoner in 4.68. Lap boards are now out for Craig Tomlin in 2.99. I think he's going to hang on and win this. Superb drive on his debut. Won here a few times in his uh, Brisker F2 over the years. Number 2.91. Matt Armstrong in second place, the ex-Rebels racer in 4.55. Got Colin Goodswin behind him in 372. Danny Wayman is up behind them now in 212. Are we going to see a late charge from the 212 car? Here comes Tomlin across the line. Three laps to run. Chris Ford in number three attacking Danny Colliver in 468. Chris Cowley ahead of them in 37. They're going past Matt Armstrong in the 455. So they are starting to close up in these closing stages, but the battle is all for second place. Wayman being hindered slightly by a back marker, lapping the 303 car of uh, Carl Whiteman there. We're on the penultimate lap now, two and a half seconds is the margin, so Danny Wayman is going to have to push on really hard indeed here if he's going to catch Craig Tomlin. He's trying his hardest. We're on the last lap now, no car between Wayman and Tomlin. Are we going to see a last bend lunge from the 212 car? I don't think he's going to get close enough. No, he's not. A 299 Craig Tomlin is going to take a win on his debut. He wins the consolation. What an impressive drive by Craig Tomlin. Second place goes to Danny Wayman. The rest of them across the line. Well, when was the last time a uh, Brisker F1 driver took a win on his debut meeting? It was uh, some time ago, I reckon. Craig Tomlin, the winner, by 0.26 of a second ahead of Danny Wayman. Chris Cowley, third ahead of Ben Riley and Danny Colliver. 20 cars went the distance in that one. Fastest lap went to Danny Wayman. Craig Tomlin, winner of the consolation. First ever win in a Formula One? Yeah, only my second ever drive. This is the first meeting I've done in F1. 
That's a fantastic drive. You had Danny coming at the end, but you held on and took a great win. Yeah, I'll see him there and I was like, am I going to get a big in here? But no, I, I kept it. And now you've had to go in a higher car. Now you've had a win in a Formula One. Is this going to see a permanent move into the big league? No, my son's doing many stocks and um, we just we just haven't got the time or the money. So yes, it's just, it was a Christmas present for my wife, actually. Well, that's the best Christmas present ever and enjoy your moment. Thank you very much. So plenty of good action so far here at Skegness Stadium. We'll take a short break here on Premier Sports. Join us for more great stock car action in a moment. Welcome back to Skegness Stadium here on Premier Sports. Some great action we've seen from the Brisker Formula One stock cars so far, including an excellent fast-paced World Championship semi-final. Now on to our support formulas this evening, starting with the Brisker Formula Two stock cars in their meeting final. 16 cars out there on track. The heats won by Richard Clubley and Stuart Hodson. Let's see who's going to take success this time. A 20-lap race for the Formula Two is Andrew Clark, the white grader in 399 lead them away already bumpers going in there the European champion 154 Michael Green battling with 732 former double world champion Daz Kitson Kitson lining up for an attack he attacks Green and they tangle up there on the outside of turn two 618 Ben Lockwood got uh, caught up as well a spectacular incident to begin the F2 final Kitson on the back of Green spins him around Lockwood taken into the fence as well race settles in with number 25 Stuart Hodson the winner of heat number two having taken over the lead one two one there of Henry King under fire and nine double one spinning out that's Phil Woolley our novice grader started from the back of the field in this one he's going in all the way through the pack a relatively small field of Brisker F2 is here tonight 16 cars S560 moving through on the inside that is uh, Luke Wrench, the reigning shootout champion. It's 25, Stuart Hodson who leads. Michael Green, the European champion, out of the race. 399 there, Clark under fire from Luke Wrench in 560. Hodson who leads. Jessica Retchless, one of the few female drivers in Brisker F2, in second place at the moment. And on the inside comes the 846 cards. Ashley England passing Jess Retchless in 586. But Stuart Hodson, number 25. Real Skegness specialist leads the way. England in second place. 560 of Luke Wrench up there with the leaders already. Now, normally he'd have the white and orange checkered aerofoil having won the shootout uh, championship last year. Unfortunately, he wrote that aerofoil off in a rollover a couple of weeks ago. So uh, that explains the rather last minute sign writing job on his borrowed red aerofoil there. Chasing after race leader Stuart Hodgson. He's now up to second place with England third, Wrenchless fourth, Billy Webster. In 226, uh, normally a shale racer completing the top five. This has got ahead of Richless there, coming down the uh, straights. Still the 25 of Hodgson who leads him, but Rich is reeling off the fastest lap times. Surely going to close in his main uh, rival for this one, Luke Wrench, Michael Green, dominating the European Championship at Northampton. He's out to it following that early fracas with uh, Daz Kitson in 732. To have Daz back in uh, Brisker F2, been missing for uh, a short while. I think it's some Callum start his racing career. Ashley England still up there in the top three. Further back in the order, there's Mark Fortune, number 64, son of John Fortune, it's world champion. Chasing Ben Lockwood, the man who rolled right at the start of the uh, European Championship. So John Hadfield used him as a bit of a launch ramp and a change to the lead there out of the turn. 5-6-0, Luke Wrench has taken over from Stu Hodson in at number 25. Hodson will fight back, the uh, locally based yellow grader, but it's Luke Wrench, the man from Cheshire, who leads the way ahead of Hodson. England, Webster, Wrenchless up there in fifth, and Josh Coleman in 6-1-5, another shale regular, completing the top six. Good to see Webster and Coleman here giving Tarmac a try tonight. Luke Wrench continues to dominate proceedings. One of the quickest men on Tarmac this season, along with the likes of Michael Green, Gordon Moody as well, of course, the great Scotsman in number seven. The other star Scotsman being Craig Wallace, the British champion in car 16. And, of course, we would see Chris Burgoyne as well in 647, but unfortunately he's out injured. A crash at Bristol in the British Championships. 226 Billy Webster goes through in the black car. Looks like he's up to fourth place now. 250 going a lap down. That's Kyle Taylor to our race leader, Luke Rich. In 560, four laps to go. Plenty of uh, final wins this year already. 
dominating this one ahead of Stu Hodson, who led for most of the way. He won the second heat, heat one winner in Stanley 665. Richard Clubley, a non starter in this uh, final. 1 2 1, Henry King from the race leader. Henry has been racing on the circuits in the last couple of years in a Legends Cup. He goes a lap down there in 1-2-1. The Legends are often supporting the British Truck Racing Championship on the circuits. Andrew Clark in 3.99 is uh, lapped as well. The French is heading for victory. Coming in to start the final lap then. Hodgson safe in second ahead of Ashley England. The car of Phil Woolley still stranded on the inner kerb there. Through comes Luke Wrench, the man from Cheshire, is coming in to win the Brisker M2 feature final here at Skegness under the floodlights. He takes the chequered flag well clear of his opposition. Hodson battling with back markers there right to the final bend. I think it was Ashley England who took third place. Firmly results in just a second. No doubt about your winner there though. 5-6-0, Luke Wrench taking the win by three seconds ahead of Stu Hodson. Ashley England third ahead of Webster and Wrenchless. And it was, of course, Luke Wrench who got the fastest lap as well in our final for the Brisker Formula 2. Now it's on to the V8 Hot Stocks final. This car's powered by Rover V8 engines as opposed to the Chevrolets we see in the Brisker F1. This is another 20 lap race, 27 cars. Very impressive field of V8s out there indeed. Away they go, one car very slow away, 402 of James Billows. He hasn't got away. Comes up on the outside of the home straight. Big gaggle of blue greeners. Look at this, at least half a dozen of them pushing and shoving into turn two there. Michael Boswell has come out ahead of them in 3-2-8 and one of the yellow graders are going straight on there. 376 that was of Matt Young. So a very busy start to the V8 Hot Stocks final then. The heat's won by 498 Ollie Spencer. And 26 there in the green car, Hayley Williams. 176 Steve Young gets spun out by I think that was a 475 car putting over no, 473, sorry, Chris Brasher. For Sean Bowman gets past 469 of Dean Laird in the bright orange car. Your early leader is number 439, that's Jay Kellett's white and green car. Ahead of his fellow white graders, same grading system used as in the other formulas. Plenty of lady drivers in this formula. One of them won the second hits, of course, Hayley Williams. Took her last year off from racing to have her daughter, but uh, back racing this year. Superstar lights flashing away there, including on top of the World Champions car number one, Adam Joyce, battling with number 69 of Matt Barnard, just 17 years of age, the current under 25s champion. My Raiders seemingly content to battle among themselves in the early stages of this one as Jay Kellett leads, chased by the 517 car of Ben Curtin. He's attacking for the lead out of the turn there. The rain starting to increase here at Skegness Stadium as Curtin up the inside and he takes the lead. You can see the track getting more slippery now. You can see the rain gleaming on the racing surface. The floodlights as 517 Ben Curtin takes over the lead. 211 of Phoebe Waveman. Under attack there from 465 Jed Sturk, and they tangle up coming off the turn. And 376 Matt Young crashes into Phoebe Waveman. So does the 130 car of Jez Ridley. So Phoebe Waveman, the former British champion, out of this one, keeps Jez Ridley ahead on there as she tries to get going again. 328 has caught our leader, Michael Boswell. We uh, saw him make the break for the front of the Blue Tops. Earlier on, Michael, the ex-Banger racer, up there in second place now, chasing Ben Curtin for the lead. And that Matt Barnard, I think that is, uh, with a problem in 69, slowing down. It's Boswell to the inside, he's going to take the lead as they go down the straight there. Yes, he takes over from Ben Curtin at the front of the field. 3 2 4 Sean Bowman under fire from Tom Spencer in 2.98. Our brother Holly won the First race tonight, heat one. So attacking Terry Hawkins in 275 and bumpering Sean Bowman at Buckinghamshire wide in 324. 275 Hawkins now under fire, 298. Michael Boswell, the race leader, has done the fastest lap of the race as 298 Tom Spencer gets through. Now attacking the two uh, lower graders there, Jay Kellett and Ben Curtin, who've had a good run in this race. Looks like Tom Spencer is about to dive through. Yes, up the inside, just punts Kellett wide onto the slippery surface on the outside, and through he goes. Michael Boswell continues to lead the way, though, by a handsome margin at the moment, the man from the Cotswolds. 298, Tom Spencer trying to close on him. He flicks 176 of Steve Young wide there. We saw Steve in a bit of a tangle in the early stages. Tom Spencer, one to watch here in 298. World champion number one, Adam Joyce race very successfully in the Rebels formula with his brother James. Never quite managed to win the gold route there though, but he has won the gold as we can see in 
15 V8s. Sophie Maynard gets pushed aside in 154 by our race leader. To see so many female racers in the V8 hot stocks. Adam Joyce has done the fastest lap of the race. Can he catch our leaders? Still Michael Boswell with the lead. Tom Spencer is now in second place in 298. Can he off the turn there? The superstar lights flashing away. The leader has lapped the number 63 car. Of back marker traffic in this one. The leader trying to put as many back markers between himself and second place. But it will be five laps to go this time for Michael Boswell. Tom Spencer in second. Trying to work out who is in third position. I think it is Adam Joyce in the uh, number one. Michael Boswell continues to lead in 3.28, but Tom Spencer is reeling him in. We're going to see an attack here before the checkered flag falls I'm sure of it they're coming up to lap the 179 of Richard Arrowsmith he lets the leaders through and now Spencer right on the bumper of the 3 to 8 of Michael Boswell here he goes with an attack into the turn up the inside 298 Tom Spencer takes the lead with the three laps left to run coming out of turn four there Tom Spencer leads it he's going to try and get a family double with Ollie Spencer having won heats at number one Ollie Spencer's not far behind these two we could see a family one two here because Ollie has uh, almost caught Adam Joyce. I think he's going to run out of time to catch second place, though. It's Boswell still clear of them as we watch Richard Arrowsmith. He's uh, a lap down, as we saw earlier. Plenty of action all the way down this VA top stops field. We're on the last lap now. It's going to be a win for Tom Spencer in 298. Son of Les Spencer, ex Brisker F1, number 98. I don't think his brother's quite going to catch Michael Boswell make it a family one too. No, he's not, but he may get Adam Joyce on the line for third. Checkered flag goes out, then Tom Spencer wins it. And Ollie Spencer, he has got third position on the last lap ahead of Adam Joyce. So a 1-3 for the Spencer brothers, split by long-time leader Michael Boswell. Entertaining stuff from the V8 hot stocks. Well done, Tom Spencer. Two wins for the family tonight. He blinks it sideways in celebration. Here he collects the spun car there of Ashley Geary, number 82. Win going to Tom Spencer by 1.15 seconds ahead of Michael Boswell, with Ollie Spencer third ahead of the gold top. Adam Joyce and Terry Hawkins rounding out the top five. Impressive 24 cars went the distance in that one. The rain has well and truly set in here at Skegness ahead of the Brisker Formula One meeting final. This for the Wilf Blundell Memorial Bowl. It's been run in memory of a long time former racer. 31 cars are out there on track for this one. All the big names, including World Championship semi final winner. Nigel Green from earlier on in car 4-4-5. Along with uh, all of our uh, qualifiers, except for Rob Speak, he's not on the grid. Car 318 returning to his uh, promoter's duties. Craig Tomlin at the front, along with Richard Davies. Craig, the winner, of course, of the consolation event. And here we go. Look at the rain coming down as the 20 laps get underway. Craig Tomlin leads into the first turn in car number 299. Everybody else slip and slide away behind them. Dean Whitwell at the inside in 195. He's made a good start and he's going to take the lead as they come round to complete the first lap. Stuart Smith under fire from Frankie Waneman Jr. in number one. He's put himself out. Waneman has gone. Rare spin for the world champion and Dan Johnson taken out as well and Chris Ford. That was Luke Davidson in uh, 464 putting the bumper in. We've got yellow flags out because Matt Newson has come to a halt on the home straight. He hasn't got away. So the race stopped already. I think we're going to see a few stoppages, judging by the conditions here. It's one of the drivers can see where they're going. The rain is pouring down. 195 Dean Whitwell, your leader then, ahead of Aaron Leach in number 70. Neil Hooper in third place in 545. Yellow graders all the way at the front. The white graders scattered fairly quickly there. Craig Tomlin was pushed wide for the lead by Dean Whitwell on the uh, first lap. Away we go then with the 195 up front. There is Craig Tomlin further back in the pack as we get underway. Michael Scriven going sideways there in the number 12, secured his world final place earlier on. He could be a force to be reckoned with in the big race in switch in September. The car spinning in the background, that's Drew Lammers getting shunted out in car 543. A couple of the cars tangled with him, Steve Whittle in 183 is in there. On board with Neil Hooper in 545, the man from Exeter, former Brisker F2 star. There with the leaders, we have a change for the lead. Number 70, Aaron Leach has taken over. Carl Ashley England has been racing recently on the tarmac. Third place is Todd Jones, the winner of heat number one. Dean Whitwell slowing down, it's like he's got a problem, unfortunately. Nigel Green getting the bumper in. Richard Davies goes for a spin in 325. Tangles with Craig Tomlin 
in 299. Stuart Smith on the way up as well, passing 55 of Craig Finnegan, who's had a fairly quiet season on the tarmac this year. And Davies and Tomlin on the outside. Steve Whittle has crashed into them in 183. Reduce the tails of spray behind the cars. Aaron Leach continues to lead in at number 17. He goes well in the wet, had his first win at a very wet at Birmingham last season, but the caution flags have come out for those cars, I suspect, stranded on turn three there. Steve Whittle, uh, Craig Tomley and Richard Davies and a couple of others, I think, have gone in there as well on turn three. So the caution flag out again, and the cars will form up single file, ready for another restart. Your race leader is Aaron Leach in car number 70. We've only completed about uh, four laps. Leach ahead of Todd Jones. Third is 545 of Neil Hooper back underway then Jones wasting no time already on the attack as they come round towards the green flag he gets the bumper in straight up the inside and into the lead goes the winner of heat number one tonight Todd Jones Frankie JJ under fire from Danny Wayman the Waymans are war and we've got a bit of a pile up there out of the turn the track is almost blocked Ben Riley's in there uh, Dan Johnson Stuart Smith has gone in there as well what's going to happen as the leaders come round this is going to be interesting is, is there a way through there's cars everywhere on the exit of the turn Todd Jones oh very impressive through on the inside there he nearly mounted the infield tyres but he gets through in a shower of sparks gets a punt as well from uh, Junior Wayman who's trying to unlap himself but surely we're going to go yellow flag because the track is almost fully blocked coming off the turn there let's see that from Stuart Smith's point of view the gap just closed ahead of him and zonk straight into the side of George Elwell in the 501 car he tangled with Ben Riley and 422 Tom Harris spun them aside there was just so many cars involved the track was just blocked up there was nowhere to go Stuart Smith wallop into them he went so Tom Jones your leader this time Aaron Leach down to third behind Neil Hooper Will Hunter we've not seen much of him tonight up there behind them in 220 away goes Jones as the green flag goes down the green lights come on and Jones clears off into the lead Hunter attacking the second place in the 220 car looks like he's got through there at turn one everybody else left in their wake quite literally Tom Jones pulling away 186 second Will Hunter Attacking there for third, Tom Harris in car 84, he's going well. Back of one of the yellow tops out, Hooper in 545, there's Leach, Nigel Green's up there. It's Todd Jones going clear of Will Hunter at the front of the field. Just a couple of laps, he's pulled out a three-second lead. Neil Hooper in third place, Stuart Smith fighting back after he got caught in that pile-up earlier on. He gets uh, a couple of places back again, but it's a wonder he can see where he's going. Just look at the spray, he gets the bumper in on treble five, Frankie JJ there, sends him wide. Fastest lap of the race for Tom Harris in car 84. He could be the car to watch here. Stuart Smith tries almost blindly to make his way up the order. Well, there's Todd Jones. He's probably thinking, uh, wondering where everyone else has gone. He's way ahead of everybody else. Second place now is Harris. He's got ahead of Will Hunter. And then in fourth place is Nigel Green from the very back of the grid in 4-4-5. The man who will start on the front row for this year's uh, World Final. We won't know if it's inside or outside for him until after the second semi-final at Stoke because the uh, two final, two semi-final winners take part in a coin toss to decide who will start off the inside. 390 of Stuart Smith will be on the second row for that World Final as Todd Jones leads, but Tom Harris is reeling him in now. There's Craig Finnegan, he has been lapped in the 55 car. I say, not the best of seasons on the tarmac for him. There's Harris going through in second, he's well clear of Will Hunter. Fourth place is green, so the higher graders rising to the occasion in this uh, Wilf Lundell Memorial Bowl final. Grand National also runs today in memory of the great Wilf Lundell. Neil Hooper's dropped out of the race, he ran third early on in 5-4-5. So Todd Jones leads them, but Tom Harris, look at he's got the gap down to 8.8 .8 of a second now over Todd Jones and Will Hunter. Danny Wayman getting the bumper in on 3.90 of uh, Stuart Smith. So the lead is down to 0.8 of a second. It was three seconds at one point for Todd Jones. And Tom Harris reeling off the fastest laps. Surely going to catch Todd Jones shortly. Yes, there he is. Just one back marker. Danny Colliver separating the two of them. The leader coming up to lap Aaron Leach, who led a couple of laps early on. There is Harris getting past the back markers there. Closing up on Todd Jones, who uses the curb to try and find a bit of extra grip coming through turn three there, that boards are out for the 186 car, can he hold on? Well there's Tom Harris starting to loom up in his mirror now, I think we're going to see an attack for the lead shortly from the former world champion Tom Harris in car number 84, the man who's raced successfully on the 
American ovals in midget cars this season. Ryan Harrison's been racing in America as well this year. Here comes Tom Harris, ready to get the bumper in on Todd Jones. There's the attack into the turn. Round goes, round the outside goes Todd Jones. Up the inside goes Tom Harris, and he has taken over the lead. So Tom Harris surely heading for victory now. Coming round to start the final lap very shortly. Coming up to lap the treble five of Frankie JJ, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. who qualified in tenth place for the world final earlier on. Harris using the curve now off the turn. He is coming in to win. 84, Tom Harris coming in to take his first final win for a while on the tarmac. He comes in to take the chequered flag ahead of Todd Jones. Good effort, but had to settle for second. And we wait to see who's going to come through for third. Last bend sort out, and Nigel Green pips Will Hunter with a last bend sort out there for third place. Stuart Smith recovering well. He was in the top ten after getting involved in that pile-up earlier on, but uh, Tom Harris through the gloom to take the win in fine style there, beating uh, Todd Jones by just under 1.2 seconds. Nigel Green in uh, third place. Harris also getting the fastest lap of the race. Will Hunter and Danny Wayman rounding out the top five. Tom Harris, final winner on uh, Not So Sunny Skeggy. Yeah, the, yeah, I think the weather played into my hands in that one. Um, got very good wet form and when it started to rain, knew exactly what to do to the car to, um, to make it right. So, um, yeah, it's a massive improvement from what we had last week with a, a fresh car anyway. So. Uh, we're going in the right direction, wet and dry. Yeah, it was certainly very, very fast in that one. You were closing on Todd very quickly at the end. Yeah, it's just about being calm, cool, calm and collected, really, you know, and not rushing it. If you, if you rush, you make mistakes and, you know, it takes longer to catch someone. So, you know, I knew I could get to I, I couldn't see how many laps there to go. So um, but I just kept my cool and um, the only way you're going to catch him is keep your cool and, uh, and drive the car. So we managed to get there and, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the final one. Ryan Harrison does smile. Yeah, it's got to be a first, that, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Ryan the boss Harrison does have a smile. <laughs> well, best of luck for the national. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. We just changed the car again, so um, starting lap handicap, so hopefully to improve it some more and uh, get further up there. Well, good luck. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Last race of the night, then, the Grand National. So run for the Wilf Blundell Trophy. 84 Tom Harris starting from the lap handicap. We've got 26 cars out there on track for this one. Wayne Marshall and the 303 of Carl Whiteman leading off. Matt Armstrong and Aaron Leach at the front of the yellow tops. Good to see Chris Brocks off. The Shale regular out there again in 3-3-8. Danny Wayman in there in the red tops along with Frankie JJ. They had a bit of a tangle in the final. Stuart Smith heads the superstars alongside Craig Finnegan in the 55. Junior Wayman is there. Nigel Green as well. The rain has eased off a little still going to be very, very tricky out there for this Grand National event. Tom Harris moving to the outside there. Should be in front of the white tops, not next to them, to start from the lap handicap. Looking for some extra points if he can get into the top ten. Very steady round to the green flag. It's going to be a 16-lap race. So away they go, and it will be Wayne Marshall in 483 who leads off. Matt Armstrong gives the uh, 303 of Carl Whiteman the old heave ho there as they head up towards turn one. Away we go, Luke Davidson already on the attack there, attacking George Elwell in the 501. Shane Geary's he's made a bad start in 478, he's all over the place. They splash their way around the first lap, 455. Matt Armstrong has gone to the front, Chris Broxop gets spun out there, tangles with Carl Whiteman, stuck on the outside. Somebody else collecting them, couldn't so quite identify who that was. Big push and shove here into the uh, turn. Junior Wayman in the middle of that lot, been a tough night for the world champion. World semi-final at Stoke on August the 12th, of course. Nigel Green coming under fire from Craig Finnegan in 55 as he tries to move up from the back. Quickest man on tarmac at the moment, as he showed earlier on in the World Championship semi-final. 455, Matt Armstrong it is who leads the way by a clear margin at the moment. Danny Colliver looks like he's up in the second place in the 468 car. Armstrong, the ex-Rebels racer leads. 464 has dropped out of the race. That is uh, Luke Davidson. It's Armstrong ahead of Neil Hooper, now in second. Third is uh, Sean Willis. No, he's not. Stuart Smith has taken over third place. He's blown through from the back in 390. He could be a favourite in this one. Stuart Smith, the former world champion, 
in car number 393 wide out of the turn now that's not going to work and it's junior wayman that's gone round he's tangled there with paul harrison in car number two the 2011 world champion they're stuck there in the uh, middle of the straights i think we're going to go yellow yes the caution is out caution out stuart smith then able to close up under the yellow flags in third place behind neil hooper ready for the restart then 455 matt armstrong will lead them off Stuart Smith going straight through into second place past Neil Hooper. It's surely only a matter of laps before he catches Armstrong. Well, Armstrong's run wide there, coming off the turn. He's surely going to lose the lead here to Stuart Smith in 390. Yes, he goes through. I think there's some rainwater got into our uh, transponder system, unfortunately. That uh, means we haven't got the uh, five lap time, so apologies there. Neil Hooper battling with the 455 of Armstrong and the 445 of Green is up there as well, but Stuart Smith clearing off in front as the rain coming down once again splash their way around Skegness Stadium Nigel Green in 445 Will Hunter in 220 under fire from 55 of Craig Finnegan to the former novice of the year award winner so here comes Nigel Green attacking the uh, 545 of Neil Hooper so we've got uh, 545, 445 and 455 all fighting away for the uh, second, third and fourth place positions. Stuart Smith lapping Wayne Marshall and Carl Whiteman, our two white graders. Reeling off the quickest laps here in 390. With 390, we're past half distance now. Nigel Green passes Shane Geary. It's the eight hopscotch racer in 478. Nigel Green being touted by many as the favourite for the uh, world final this year. As Stuart Smith gives Chris Brocks up a good shove there, spins him out taking any risks with the back markers here. Nigel Green is now up, uh, I think, into second place. Yes, he's there in second. Ahead of uh, the lower graders battling behind him. Neil Hooper still up there in 5-4-5. Where is Tom Harris in all of this? He's making his way up the order fairly rapidly, I think, as well. Stuart Smith, away and clear at the front. There is Green. Hooper in third, and I think Tom Harris is up into the top five, in fact, from the uh, lap handicap, so very impressive in these conditions indeed, Tom Harris. Three laps to go for Stuart Smith in 3.90. He's back for Tom Harris, and there he is, and I think he's in fourth place now, Tom Harris, in 84. Mightily impressive from the lap handicap. Very rare to see a driver get up uh, that high from the, uh, from the lap down. We saw Craig Finnegan of Bellevue earlier this season take a final and Grand National double. It's very rarely done. Can Tom Harris do it here? I think he's going to run out of time to catch Stuart Smith, but he may get into the top three. Smith is heading for the win. Green in second. They're not going to be caught here. We're on the last lap now. Stuart Smith goes down the back straight for the final time. Coming up to lap Matt Armstrong, who led the early going in 4-5-5. Coming in to take the chequered flag. 3-9-0, Stuart Smith wins the Grand National, Nigel Green second, and Tom Harris will take third place. Mightily impressive from Tom Harris in 84, he really can drive in the wet conditions. Wilf Blundell Trophy goes to 390, Stuart Smith, the Wilf Blundell Bowl went to Tom Harris in the meeting final. Smith the winner then of the Grand National. We say unfortunately our transponder system went down midway through that race apologies there but it was nigel green in second tom harris third ahead of neil hooper in fourth 390 stuart smith winner of the grand national absolutely storming drive in the wet there yeah we in the final i got myself into a position to well follow tom through really and, and my car just was totally not underneath me and i just dropped through the pack i think i dropped down to seventh but um we made some big, big changes for that and it was just a total different car. I think we can go even further and make it better. So I'm just really happy we've got a wet setup because coming the shootout uh, for the points championship, you need to be good in every conditions, every track, every surface. Um, so I think we've got everything boxed off at the minute. Both cars are going well, so I'm really looking forward to the future. Yeah, starting to get the early season form is coming back and you've just won a lovely trophy for the Blundell Memorial as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. This is a Wolf Blundell trophy, which is a memorial trophy. It's good to win trophies like that, you know. Um, characters and legends in the sport are represented still, um, even though they're not with us. You know, they're still 
represented so to win trophies like this it does mean a lot well thank you very much and we'll see you at the next one yeah you will thanks one world championship semi-final out of the way then the grid for the second one sees dan johnson and danny wayman at the front of the grid world champion junior wayman and tom harris on the second row with mick sorder set to line up on row three what a great race that promises to be on the 12th of august at the stoke shaleway that's about all from here at Skegness tonight then. Our next action will come from Stoke on World Semi-Final Day on August the 12th. Thanks very much for watching tonight. It's goodbye for now.